Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Carolina Weather Authority Meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. Hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. Apologize in advance. I'm getting over a bit of a chest cold here. Uh, everything's going to be okay, though. Uh, so I may not be full strength um, audio wise, but I'm feeling okay. Got a lot of rest here the last couple of days. All right, so if you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel and invite your friends to do so, we still have a lot to talk about in the tropics. And once we start to talk about winter here in the east and southeast, we'll have more videos for that as well. But um, honestly, uh, it's not looking like it's going to be wintry anytime soon for us here as everything's just been uh, delayed due to the La Nina that we're dealing with. All right, so <clears throat> here is the graphic right now. We obviously have a new storm, Iota, which is one that's been fairly well predicted. It actually developed yesterday from a depression into a storm. And uh, right now remains a tropical storm, but the uh, forecast is for it to start to intensify tonight and to quickly intensify into a hurricane tomorrow and likely to be a major hurricane, probably a Category 3, maybe a long shot at a 4, uh, with landfall expected. Uh, late Monday night, early on Tuesday, uh, unfortunately in a spot that just had to deal with Ada here two weeks ago. Um, likely to be the far eastern part of Honduras and northeastern Nicaragua where that landfall is made. This does not look to be a threat to the United States. I know a couple of uh, ensemble members have shown that. Uh, but because the storm is developing a little bit more slowly, it's not going to um, have any kind of steering that takes it northwest towards um, the southern Gulf of Mexico. So unlike Ada, this storm is not looking like a threat to the U.S. Now, I will say there are more potential threats behind it um, as this season remains very busy. This is storm number 30. We're likely to see number 31 probably in the next week or week and a half uh, to develop kind of in a similar spot. <clears throat> and uh, models are showing it mostly drifting toward Costa Rica, but um, it will get into an area where it may reach a level of very weak steering and sit around for a little bit while, and then we'll have to watch and see if maybe it can try to get pulled northward again, and that could affect you in Jamaica, Cuba, the Yucatan, and possibly even Florida down the road around Thanksgiving. Uh, but again, way too soon to even say that. Just something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, I'm not the monger of all mongers. I'm not saying we're going to have a Cat 2 hitting Florida at this point. Um, but I am not ready to safely give you guys the green light saying there's not going to be any threat to worry about the rest of the month either. I just don't um, see a way of writing that off just yet based on um, steering currents coming in the next couple of weeks behind this large area of high pressure that's going to build in and cool off the southeast finally uh, because it was very miserable a couple days ago for sure. And um, we, we need the dry weather for sure here in North Carolina. At my house, we received over six inches of rain from the upper low in the front that just moved through here Thursday night into Friday. Um, some areas to my east got 11 inches around Rocky Mountain Wilson and are still dealing with major flooding. And that wasn't really even from Ada. That was more uh, kind of a piece of separate moisture that uh, drew up some of that moisture from Ada. So kind of a separate system aloft that drew up the tropical moisture uh, from Ada. But nonetheless, it might as well have been a tropical storm. Uh, we just didn't have the wind. <clears throat> so, excuse me. All right, so here's the tropics. This is Iota. Not very well organized, but you do see quite a few thunderstorms uh, near the coast of Colombia and Panama in the southwest Caribbean, but the center is actually here. Uh, we have an upper low northeast of Puerto Rico in the Virgin Islands, not expected to develop at this point, but we are going to keep an eye on it down the road. And then on the tail end of that is a tropical wave, which is expected to move west and follow on the heels of Ada and Iota. And that's what could end up developing if it... Um, runs into a more favorable regime after IOTA moves out of the way for maybe a Kappa to develop, but that's going to be probably a week from now. Um, so we're, we're not done yet in the tropics behind IOTA. I wish I could say we were, but we're not. And this, by the way, is Theta, but it's beginning to lose its tropical characteristics. The circulation center is now displaced. Um, this is the uh, Canary Islands, and we're going to see some rain from that in the Canaries. Um, and then it's going to turn northeast toward Portugal, but merge with this front up in here. Uh, so we won't have to worry about talking about Theta. Let's take a closer look, though, why don't we, at IOTA. <clears throat> and uh, this is the infrared satellite, and you can see thunderstorms are starting to form closer to the low-level center, which is up here. Um, the system has been receiving some wind shear, which is why it hasn't developed very quickly out of the gate just yet. Uh, but that wind shear is expected to eventually relax, and that will allow the storm to become vertically stacked. So the low-level center and the thunderstorms will line up, and once that happens, we should start to see intensification. Uh, it's probably going to begin later on this evening or tonight. We'll have an aircraft reaching the storm soon, and we'll know more about it. Uh, but right now, not expected to intensify very quickly. It will be kind of more of a gradual intensification. But Sunday is kind of our day of uh, judgment in that we're likely to see 
um, if the stars align, some very rapid intensification, like we saw with Ada. And that will occur in this area and here, and we will likely have a hurricane by the end of the weekend. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but the water's favorable, and as the wind shear dies down, and the uh, thunderstorms do form near the low-level center, which I'm going to show you on the visible satellite here, then we are likely to see uh, very intense intensification, perhaps um, 70 knots or more of intensification in two days, which is about 80 miles per hour. So it could go from 40 to 120 or 50 to 130, just to give you an idea. Um, does it get as strong as Ada, which was 150? Um, not terribly likely. I'm not going to rule it out the way storms have gone this year, but it's not looking quite as likely. Uh, but nonetheless, it's going to hit in a spot that's really been dinged up hard after Ada um, over parts of Honduras and Nicaragua, unfortunately, and Belize as well down the road, uh, and Guatemala and El Salvador. So uh, you can see the low-level center is kind of exposed down in here. This is the low-level center. Here's the mid-level center to the east. They're starting to get closer, um, and you can see we'll probably start to have some intensification starting this evening once it pulls away from Columbia, which has some pretty tall mountains. And this air coming down off the mountains is downsloping and drying out a little bit, so it's got to get a little farther west in here before it can go to town. Uh, here's a look at our tropical map. No other systems to worry about. Theta is a 40 mile per hour low end tropical storm falling apart heading this direction. Here's Iota, also a 40 mile per hour storm but likely to strengthen. It's a tale of two storms. Um, I'll put the hurricane track on for you and we'll see a tropical storm warning for these islands that are owned by Colombia off the Nicaraguan coastline. Um, and then um, we'll likely see a hurricane watch issued tonight or first thing tomorrow in this bend here that was under a hurricane watch and warning uh, when Ada came on shore here less than two weeks ago. So it's going to be a 14-day break from one major hurricane to the next. Uh, this unfortunately looks like it's going to be a, a humanitarian disaster for these folks in Nicaragua and Honduras, as well as Guatemala, Salvador, and even parts of Belize as the storm weakens and moves farther west. It's still going to have a ton of thunderstorm activity with it. Um, a look at our model guidance from Tropical Tidbits shows better agreement. We had some models earlier, like the HRF and the HMON, which tried to turn it northwest toward the Yucatan. Uh, I will say this is uh, more encouraging for those of you in places like Shetamal on northward, like Tulum and Cancun. Uh, you'll probably get some rain, but you're not going to see a direct impact. Um, and now we're seeing more of an adjustment where most of the models are actually having landfall south of the border. Um, Ada, if you remember, hit right here. Um, this one could hit within 30 miles of it, probably just north. Um, and the landfall is likely to be in about 60 hours, um, which would put it at Tuesday morning. Uh, look at the uh, ensemble intensity. Some of the models had it as a four or five. Now they packed off to three. Um, I would leave four open for now. I don't think it'll get to five, but probably a category three. And if it takes a little longer to get developed and lined up tonight, then uh, it may be a, a lower end category three. But we're likely to have our, uh, I think it's our fifth major hurricane of 2020, which is pretty darn unusual to see that many. Um, here is a look at the HWERF, and you can see it's intensifying the storm right up through landfall. Um, the intensification begins uh, later on this evening, and we have a tropical storm likely strengthening into a hurricane, it looks like, um, in the morning tomorrow, which is probably a little faster than it may actually end up happening. But nonetheless, it's onto that intensification track, um, and it continues to intensify. There's nothing weakening this system. The pressure drops into the 940s, according to the HWERF model, and even into the upper 930s. Uh, which puts it squarely as a Category 3 and maybe even a Category 4 uh, before leveling off at landfall. Now, this model has dropped southward. It had a track toward Belize earlier. Now it's got northeast Honduras. But if the trend continues, we may be looking at northeastern Nicaragua once again. This whole area is going to get hit hard no matter what. Um, so the landfall point, of course, we're going to focus on for storm surge and wind impacts. Uh, but the rainfall is going to be there regardless. So the good news is that once it comes inland, it's going to weaken pretty quickly. Bad news is that that puts that rain over areas that really just can't afford any more rain. And here you can see the rain starting to pick up uh, during the day on Monday, and we're looking at 300 millimeters just offshore. Um, that's 30 centimeters, which if you do the math, I believe that puts us at uh, about 12 inches, so about a foot of rain right there. And you can see that number is going to double by the end of the week, and some of these areas are going to be looking at probably upwards of 20 to 24 inches of rain, which is going to cause major catastrophic flooding, mudslides, loss of life, I mean, you name it. Um, people in here are still struggling dealing with Ada, and now they've got another one to deal with. So a very bad situation likely to unfold. Uh, the European ensembles are all in agreement that this storm will hit as a hurricane and then track west and fall apart. Yeah, there's a couple that take it southwest to the Pacific, but by then it's a remnant low. It doesn't have another storm forming in the next six days, but the GFS does. Uh, the GEF ensembles, this is the first storm. Only one model takes it into the Gulf. Everybody else 
um, is going into Nicaragua or Honduras or southern Belize, which is what we're thinking. Um, does have maybe an area to watch here for gradual development from that upper low I was talking about, east of the Bahamas, and this would be a few days before Thanksgiving. Uh, but as you can see, it does eventually develop another system down in here, which is Kappa, um, probably around the 21st or 22nd. You can see all these new ensembles that are showing up as I animate it. And you can see a more of a track toward Jamaica or even Cuba at that point, and a few model ensembles take it towards the southeastern Gulf. So Florida, you'll want to watch it at least, um, as we could be eating Thanksgiving under a tropical storm watch at very worst. Um, I don't think it's likely, but it's something I think we need to at least watch at this point. Um, the Bahamas and Cuba and Jamaica and Hispaniola probably have more to be worried about as far as all the rainfall goes and maybe an organized tropical system at that point. Uh, so the next storms on the list are Kappa, Lambda, and I think we're going to get to probably 33 this season, maybe even 34 if we get a rogue storm in the Atlantic. Uh, those of you who watched me on September 10th at the midway point, we were at 17. I said we're on pace for 34. Uh, the pace has not dropped yet. It should eventually drop, but it may be till December. So uh, pretty crazy stuff we're talking about this year. Uh, finally, we'll look at the GFS uh, operational. You can see it's strengthening the storm to a Category 3 with landfall early on Tuesday and then weakening. Here's the next system behind it developing on Friday or Saturday of next weekend, close to the coast of Costa Rica, but it's not going inland. In fact, it drifts up the coast, and uh, we may have to keep an eye on it here as it ends up in the, potentially in the Northwest Caribbean after Thanksgiving, possibly even faster coming up toward Florida. So it could be a wet Thanksgiving in the Florida Keys, but more likely afterwards. You can see there's another high pressure system coming down. So it is gonna be a battle between this cooler, drier air mass, which will be enjoyed uh, Black Friday into Saturday after Thanksgiving, and then the moisture that's still in the Northwest Caribbean and perhaps getting into deep South Florida. It's gonna be a battleground. We'll have to see which air mass wins out. Finally, we'll look at the GFS operation, or the parallel model from earlier. And uh, you can see um, the storm coming a little farther north, but this run was a few days ago, so I bet you it'll trend south. And then here's the next system, which doesn't really develop just yet, Kappa, uh, but eventually it's going to be spinning around in here, and we'll have to keep an eye on it as the water is still between 84 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which more than likely can develop a tropical system out of it. Uh, you can see it's got more trouble potentially down the road in this zone in here, but also with this high building in, uh, we may not have to worry about the United States. So a lot to talk about there, but again, uh, we've got some potential out down the road to see something come down here and either spin out or move into Costa Rica or eventually maybe turn northward. And at that point, we're talking around or after Thanksgiving. So I, I thank you guys for joining me. Sorry, my voice isn't at full strength. It'll get better. Um, I'm already starting to feel better and sleeping better. So uh, we'll get there. But I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this beautiful weather that we have and uh, get a chance to dry out here in the Carolinas next week. It'll feel very nice. All right, folks, uh, thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. Be safe and God bless.